Michael Morales Torres para Lucha Libre Online, la marca número uno de Pro Wrestling y Combat Sports en el mundo. Mi invitado especial en la tarde de noche o mañana de hoy, dependiendo de cuando estén viendo esto. Tiene un background bastante interesante porque estuvo en la industria de la lucha libre activo, sea como manejador y en múltiples roles dentro de la industria independiente en Estados Unidos. Es periodista de igual manera, ganador del Emmy eh, para el Major League Baseball, también, o sea, que tiene background en pelota o en béisbol. Eh, también host de múltiples shows de, de Podcast Heat y de Ad Free Shows, específicamente los shows de Matt Hardy eh, y de The Wise of Wrestling, al igual que tienen múltiples otras cosas. Él está en todos lados. Démosle la bienvenida al a fellow journalist también, John Alba, llegando aquí por primera vez a Lucha Libre Online. John, man, it is a privilege to have you as our guest. Welcome to the show. How are you? Claro que sí, me apreciado a su tiempo, pero... Uh... I can't go much more than that. I, I took, I'll tell you what, I took like 12, 13 years of Spanish and I was really good at it for a really long time. And then my first on-air job was at an ABC and Fox affiliate in Bangor, Maine, where there ain't nobody speaking Spanish up there. So when you lose, when you're not speaking it and when you're not talking it consistently, you lose the ability to be fluid with it. So like, I understood pretty much everything you just said, but to be able to spit it back, I've, I've unfortunately, I've kind of lost that ability, but thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And you just redirected the whole interview. You spoke <laughs> Spanish. You I learned did. Spanish for 12 or 13 years. Yeah. Was that due to the journalist background? That was like kind of a passion you had for languages. Why do you decided to study Spanish? Yeah, so it was a requirement for school, like growing up and okay. and but but there was more to it because like I knew that I've known since I was five years old what I wanted to do with my life. So I knew that if you're bilingual, that will go much further and that will take you in, into other opportunities. So um, plus, I feel like if you understand someone else's culture, it allows you to be a little more compassionate, empathetic and. I, I really loved learning Spanish um, and I'll never forget when I was up in Maine, I told you I didn't really speak it, but there was one basketball player, a woman's basketball player that transferred into the University of Maine and she was really good. So we had to interview her, but she was from Spain and she really only spoke Spanish and her English was very broken. So I went to interview her and I realized she was very nervous And I just was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. So I start spitting some Spanish at her. And she mellowed out so quickly and got so comfortable with me. And years later, once she graduated, I was gone out of Maine at that point, but she DM'd me on Twitter. And she was like, I can't tell you how much that meant to me that like you wanted to make me feel comfortable by speaking my native language. So like for me, that paid off in that moment. And then when I was at Disney... You know, you're on the monorails and you hear, por favor, manténganse a las puertas. And then you're like, okay, I know what that means. So, you know, <laughs> that's what I got for you. Brother, you mentioned something really important. It's that you decided what you wanted to do when you were five years old. When I was five, I was highly probably watching wrestling in, in underwear, running in my house, making my parents go crazy. But when you were five, you, you know, you already knew what you wanted to do with your life. But you've done so many things with your life. Like, what was specifically what you were aiming when you were yeah. a kid? And how did that, you know, mix inside the wrestling industry? Yeah, uh, it, it was the 1998 New York Yankees home opener. I believe it was April 9th or April 10th, 1998. Uh, it was a 17 to 13 score. The Yankees won at home. And I mean, if you're a baseball fan, you know, 17 to 13 is a very abnormal score for a game. So... I just remember seeing it was such an exciting game. And I turned to my mom and I said, I want to be the guy that talks about that for a living. So I knew I wanted to be a sportscaster. And pretty much from eighth grade on, I put all my focus in making that happen. And I was doing online sports talk radio because podcasts weren't really a thing then. So I was doing online sports talk radio live. It was probably terrible, but it was good reps, right? And I took broadcasting courses, camps, everything. I, I just wanted to be a sportscaster so bad. And the day that I had my first on-air opportunity, 
I finished my sports cast and it was terrible, but I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, you know what? I could quit today and say I did what I wanted to do. So I tried to just kind of live the rest of my career that way, you know? Which leads me to my next question. Baseball was the thing, you know, journalists, where journalism was the thing that, that caught your eye since you were a kid. You wanted to speak about sports, but wrestling, you know, as it is today, it's more a sports entertainment oriented thing. So how did John Alba, a young kid dreaming in New Jersey to become a sports journalist, entered inside the wrestling industry for the first time? So I always loved wrestling as a kid, probably since I was four years old. Sports and wrestling were just my everything. I loved both of them. And then um, I started writing for a wrestling website when I was like starting college. It was just a hobby. I was like, you know what? This is cool. Like I want to pursue sports journalism. So let me write about something I'm really passionate about. But I always kind of figured it would just be a hobby. I never envisioned it would be something that I would make a full-time thing because I didn't see there was a realistic path. I wasn't going to be a pro wrestler. So I didn't really know. And in 2015, I was interviewing Billy Gunn at a one-man show. I, I was interviewing him for TV. And he said to me, you know, you have a really punchable face. And I go, oh, do I? He says, yeah, but that's going to be your key if you want to get into wrestling because people are going to want to pay money to see you get your butt kicked. And I said, okay. And in that moment, my independent wrestling character was born and it just got me more entrenched, entrenched into pro wrestling. And as I started to work the independent scene, I started to learn more about the ins and outs and nuances of the industry, how to put together a match, how to cut a promo, all this stuff. And combining it with my professional sports background of broadcasting, these two worlds kind of met together where I was able to pair two things that I felt I was pretty good at and had a pretty good understanding of into a full-time career. But now you weren't a sport broadcaster, let's say this way. Now you were the main piece. Now you were the guy that everyone wanted to punch to throw trash at him. <laughs> How do you manage, you know, going from being a sports journalist to a wrestling persona? Yeah, uh, very easy, actually, because oh. um, I feel like with what... I would do on air for a living. It is performance to a degree, right? It's on air performance. So when I'm cutting a promo in a wrestling ring or doing whatever I may be doing, it is an extension of my natural self. So I kind of lean into my background as a sportscaster and embody that whenever I'm doing something independent wrestling wise all the iterations of my character that I work on the indie scene are extensions of my real life. The Emmy award winning John Alba character. I do another one, the world renowned John Alba character, which they all lean into what I do for a living. And I work with world renowned names like Kurt Angle and Matt Hardy. So therefore anyone who works with me in a wrestling ring is also world renowned, you know? So you're leaning into that stuff and just being as much of a jerk as you can possibly be And when you have a punchable face, it, it lends itself to success. You know, it's been fun. I, I love it. But the most important thing about working in independent wrestling is it has made me smarter at talking about wrestling in, in infinite amounts of ways. John, let's go a little back to when you were five years old. It was baseball that initially caught your eyes. Uh, you know, you wanted to be a sports journalist. However, you got the opportunity to actually work for the Major League Baseball, uh, and you won an Emmy for them. So let's go step by step. How did you manage to get signed by the number one baseball brand in all the world? And how did you feel at that moment, knowing that you achieved that dream you had since you were five years old? Yeah, you know, it, it was fun. I, I was a producer for them um, and working hand in hand with people that I grew up idolizing or hating. I hated Pedro Martinez as a kid, but I was Pedro's producer. And I learned more about baseball than anything else because you'd be in a production meeting with Pedro Martinez 
and he'd have a baseball in his hand gripping it like a fastball and say, do you know what the difference is between releasing the ball here versus releasing the ball here? And you learn so much about the game. And my first internship was with MLB Advanced Media, which is what helped launch the WWE Network. And it was right around that time too, it was a little before it. So going through that into working for MLB Network and hand in hand with talent and kind of working with the talent to help make me better as a prospective talent. Uh, it was amazing, man. And and being part of a team that won an Emmy there, it was just an incredible experience. And uh, I loved my time with Major League Baseball. And uh, over the years, I've had a few opportunities, a few looks with them, and, and that would still be a, an awesome opportunity to get to do more work with them down the line. But you know, to this day, I get to call games every now and then on ESPN. I get to call games. I've done Fox Sports sideline reporting. So that stuff that as a little kid, I, I would have just been in awe at. So getting to do that was really, really special. You mentioned something really key. And we talked a little bit about this before the interview. And that's, you know, it's the Emmy. Uh, that's the award. That's the maximum prestige you can get inside the journalist world. And John Alba got the opportunity to win an Emmy while working his dream job with the Major League Baseball. At the moment your team was announced, you know, as the winners, what was the first thing that went through your mind? Do you had that full circle moment? It was awesome, man. It, it was really awesome. Um, you know, I, I had such a great time working with those people. So when you have that as validation, I'm not like a big, like materialistic person. So My validation doesn't necessarily come through stuff like that, but it is something that's really gratifying to say, hey, your hard work paid off. And when I was in Florida, I got nominated for multiple Emmys for my on-air work. And that was really, really gratifying because you pour your heart into telling stories and, and doing things the right way. And to be included in that group of talent that are recognized on that stage, it's just immeasurably, immeasurably gratifying. Before I go to my next question, I'm going to say something in Spanish to all our Spanish speaking audience out there. John Alba es el host de múltiples podcasts, eh, entre ellos de la cadena eh, Podcast Hit. Ahí están disponibles a través de podcasthit.com o podcasthit.com. Ahí tienes el Wu Nation on Censor de Ric Flair. Tienes a Jay the Snake Roberts, pero tienes también The Extreme Life of Matt Hardy, con un tipo que sabe muchísimo de esta industria. Tiene Wives of Wrestling también con Kim Orton, la esposa de Randy Orton, revelando todos sus secretos, con Giovanni Angle, revelando todos los secretos de, de, de Kurt Angle, pero también trabaja al otro lado y es en Art Free Shows, en donde también es parte de los hosts de múltiples programas, entre ellos The Kurt Angle Show. Todos también disponibles a través de adfreeshows.com. Tienen su Patreon, tienen sus redes sociales. Síganlo. John Alba también está disponible en las redes sociales como John Alba. Así mismo lo pueden buscar en Twitter y en Instagram. Pero vamos a entrar en el mundo del podcast en estos momentos porque Ad Free Shows y Podcast Hit son de las cadenas más sólidas en todo el mundo ahora mismo. Tienen los top players, tienen leyendas, tienen Hall of Famers. Échenle el ojo. El trabajo que están haciendo es excelente. Which actually needs me. To my next point, since John could understand 99.9% of what I spoke, which is awesome. Didn't expect this. But John, <laughs> how did you enter inside the podcast world in terms of wrestling? You no, know, you were working before for a media outlet, but now you're working for the number one podcast brand in the world, which is at Free Shows, uh, and as well for Podcast Heat, which is one of the most solid ones. How do you enter this world? La vida extrema de Matt Hardy, right? Did I get that right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you got it. <laughs> um, no. Um, I, I had been doing pro wrestling podcasting for a while. I had my Living the Gimmick podcast I was doing with my good friend, Doug McDonald, that we had for six years. And it was a really loyal following that we built up, which was a great foundation for me. And I'm super grateful for that. Um, but I had known Conrad Thompson for uh, probably about five, six years. And I was kind of one of those first listeners of something to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. And I remember reaching out to Conrad back then and just being like, Hey man, like this, this is great. This is good stuff. And when they had their first live event in Orlando, I wasn't even living in Orlando at the time, but I said, Hey man, like I'm going to be down for WrestleMania. Can I come and just do like a news story on what you guys are doing? Because I think it's awesome. And he was like, yeah. So we built that rapport right off the bat. And over the years, we kind of just stayed in touch. And then Around WrestleMania last year, 
I had kind of made the decision that I wasn't going to be re-signing with my station that I was at, but I didn't know what was going to come next. Um, there were just some personal things that I didn't feel comfortable moving forward anymore with my current station. So I was trying to figure out what my next path was. And I wasn't sure if it was going to be in local television, but I knew I wanted to stay on air. And I know that I'd worked really hard at kind of nailing the pro wrestling beat. I felt like I was really on top of the reporting end with the pandemic and all that stuff going on in Florida. And Conrad called me one day. It was a little after WrestleMania last year. And he was like, what would you think about coming in and doing a couple shows or something like that? I was like, hey, that'd be really awesome. Like, I'll have to check with my news contract and like, what will I be allowed to do and all that? He's like, okay, go ahead, do that. So we hang up and I like walk away and I'm like, I think he was asking if I wanted to join his team full time. Like, 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 I think he was. So let me give him a call back. So I called him back. I was like, are you talking about like full time? He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh. So here I am. I had always told myself I would leave local news if it meant working in baseball full time or working in wrestling full time. And I've got this potential opportunity here. And once we started talking money and all that and figured, okay, this is viable. I can do this. I said, this is a path that I could pivot into. And I'm so grateful that he's given me this opportunity in a role that I'm continuing to try to grow and pitch new shows. The Matt Hardy podcast was something that I've wanted to do for three plus years and finally brought it to this platform. And the wives of wrestling kind of just fell into my lap. But then I spent five months figuring out, okay, what is this show? So it's been a lot of fun and there's more to come too which leads me to my next point, and it is the wives of wrestling, of wrestling specifically. I want to talk about Kim Morton, wife of Randy, Giovanna, wife of Kurt. They know all their secrets. They know their diets, their routines, how they you know treat their children, how to go to make them go to sleep, everything, basically. The spicy stuff. I know. <laughs> like, who came up with the idea of having these two incredible ladies paired up with yourself and literally bring every single detail that none of those athletes yep. have tell in a single interview before. So, and this is shoot how it happened. So my bosses came to me at podcast heat and they're like, Kim Orton and Giovanna angle want to do a podcast together and we want you to host it, figure it out. That was it. <laughs> like I had no idea what was it going to be about? Like, what does the show look like? I've never met these people before. It was just, you're going to do a podcast with them, figure it out. So I spent five months building a rapport with these two women that I had never met in my life. But let me tell you, within five minutes of talking to them, they were like soulmates. Like, like Chemistry. I connected with them like that. And I think if you listen to the podcast, you will feel that synergy. We are like two sisters and a brother just hanging out and I'm their little brother that they rag on and it's super fun. Their personalities are so vibrant. They are such great mothers. They are so incredible. They are incredible wives. Both of them have done so much for their husbands, but most importantly, they love to have a good time. And that's why we have our opening toast on the show. We take shots. We have uh, the swear jar here that because uh, they swear like sailors and I tend to swear a lot too. So we do the color coded beads and whoever loses at the end of the night has to take a farewell toast. That is a John Cena quote of the week. But the thing is, you know, it's like there are so many pro wrestling podcasts out there, right? So you have to figure out how can we do something different? And this is so different. It's a pro wrestling podcast that's not about pro wrestling. It's about family. It's about life. It's about kids. It's about sex. It's about alcohol. It's about food. And it gives you that little uh, side of Randy Orton and Kurt Angle, two of the most famous wrestlers of their era that we've never seen before. And the beauty is, too, we haven't even gone into this yet, but like we're going to get other wives and come on as guests. So, like, sure, you could think of like Brie Bella, right? Like, She's been a wife to a wrestler for the last seven plus years, and she's in the industry herself. But you're also going to hear from wives like Paul White's wife, for example, like someone you wouldn't think about. Right. But what great perspective would someone like her have? So we're so excited to get into that. And I'm having a blast with that show. And they're two of my favorite humans on Earth. 
I know you are. I could saw the chemistry between the three of you. It is simply, it's natural. It's organic. It just came and it is, I'm so glad it is going, you know, the way it's going, which Thank leads you. me to my next point, the extreme life of Matt Hardy, La Vida Extrema de Matt Hardy. It's literally an extreme life. You have a guy that a week is wrestling in Chile and a week is wrestling in the US for AEW and suddenly he's in Mexico. And hey, I want to take a vacation with the kids. Let's go to Florida. Or hey, now I'm in North Carolina. Like the stories he have inside the wrestling industry, but as well outside of the wrestling industry makes him one of the most interesting humans I've ever met inside this industry. So you mentioned that you wanted to try this for over three plus years. How do you made it happen? The extreme life of Matt Hardy is the single most fulfilling thing I've ever done professionally. And it's not even close, quite frankly. Um, growing up a kid in the attitude era, I had two like, like everyone loved the rock. Like I love the rock, but I had two guys in particular that I just, for whatever reason was so drawn to Matt Hardy and Kurt Angle. And Dude, I get to host podcasts with both Matt Hardy and Kurt Angle. It's the coolest thing on the face of the earth. But with Matt in particular, I always felt like Matt was the secret sauce of the Hardy Boys. Like Jeff was Jeff. And believe me, I'm reminded every time we do a we put out a clip on Jeff, just how big of a superstar Jeff is. He, he is a superstar. But I always felt like Matt was the secret sauce. And he, he was the reason for the Hardy Boys' success. So... You look at how many times he's reinvented his career, serial reinventor. You look at the adversity that he has overcome, personal adversity and professional, but personal especially. I just said to myself, man, this guy would be such a great podcast because the stories this guy has are incredible. And he's got a great mind for the industry. So I probably came up with that idea about three and a half years ago now. And one day last summer, he finally followed me on Twitter, just kind of randomly. And I, I like made casual conversation with him, DM'd him, reached out, cordial conversation. And when I signed with Conrad's team, I said, okay, this is your shot, John. How are you going to make an impact, right? And this was my first day on the job. Nobody knows. I have actually never told this as part of the story. This is my first day on the job. I, I, I had reached out to Matt at, at like three weeks prior. I was like, Matt... I just need five minutes of your time. I've got a pitch for you. Here's my number. Give me a call. And my first day on the job, after three weeks of not hearing anything, I get a call and says, Matt Hardy on the caller ID. I'm like, okay, here we go. And bam, I pitched it to him. And he said, I think that's something I'd be interested in. And I think if you listen to the podcast, genuinely, and obviously I'm biased, I do not believe there is a more informative or transparent podcast in pro wrestling. I don't think there ever has been, and I don't know if there ever will be. He is the most transparent and honest pro wrestler I have ever spoken to. The way that he is willing to break the fourth wall down will allow you to learn like you are in the locker room watching him put a match together. And we break down. Why did it make sense that you punched him in this spot? Why, like, like breaking down the the nuances of pro wrestling plus the character development right now, as you and I record this interview, I've been doing research all day because we have a five part series, a five part series on the broken character that we're going to be debuting just five episodes on that one period of April, 2015 to April, 2017. So it's been a blast. And the coolest thing about it, man, I'm sorry, this is such a long answer, but the coolest thing about it is that, Matt Hardy is someone that I would consider a good friend now. Matt will call me at one in the morning on a Tuesday night and we'll just talk for an hour. And it's the best thing ever. He's the coolest, most genuine dude I have ever met in pro wrestling. You're living your dream. The 100%. dream you had as you were, you know, you watched this when you, once you were four, year, four or five years old and you got the opportunity as well to work with the WWE Hall of Famer with a TNA Hall of Famer, with a multi-time world heavyweight champion and one of the greatest of all times, Olympic gold medalist Kurt freaking Angle. I've interviewed him in the past. Great guy to work with best. or to talk to. However, 
producing a show for Kurt Angle and giving life to what was, you know, I, I, re I recall Kurt's first episodes and the podcast as it is right now, it is completely, completely different. How do you manage to work the magic behind the scenes and as well with Kurt for his show? You know what's funny with Kurt? He's so different from Matt. And my approaches to their shows are so completely different. Matt, I know I can riff with a little bit. And like, if you listen to the podcast, a lot of it is me asking up follow-up questions. With Kurt, there's a little more structure. But what I love that I get to do with Kurt is I can pick the brain of just a wrestling machine. And that's the real fun that I get to have with Kurt. Like we did a watch along of, and I'm hoping I'll get to do more Kurt episodes soon, but Paul Bromwell does an outstanding job with it right now. It's just Conrad. But we did an episode on Final Resolution 2007, and it was the Iron Man match with Samoa Joe, a 30-minute Iron Man match. And I just got to sit and watch a 30-man Iron Man match that Kurt Angle was in with Kurt Angle. And we're breaking down psychology and getting beneath the why of his matches. And I can see with Kurt, if we're talking about storyline stuff, like that's not Kurt's super proficient area because he wasn't in creative. He really only knows what he was told. But when I start talking the ins and outs and nuances of wrestling with Kurt, He is a kid in the freaking candy store and you just see it in his eyes and you hear it in his voice. So I know that when I'm hosting that show, if I put more focus on leaning into the, what happened in the wrestling ring, that's when I get the most out of Kurt. And he's so good when it comes to that stuff. Nuevamente, I'll say this in Spanish as well, at freeshows.com, at freeshows.com. The Kurt Angle Show, sígalos en todas las redes sociales, está disponible allí a través de la plataforma de Patreon en YouTube, está en todos lados, en Spotify, en Apple Podcast, simplemente vayan allí y podcasthit.com, ahí pueden encontrar todo de Wives of Wrestling, quienes también están en YouTube como Wives of Wrestling, al igual que en Twitter y en Instagram, al igual que The Extreme Life of Matt Hardy, está disponible en todas las redes sociales, simplemente tienen que seguirlos y prestarle atención. Eh, es algo completamente distinto a lo que se ve en América Latina, es algo completamente distinto a lo que se ve en Estados Unidos. Así que créanme, si ustedes quieren educarse un poco más sobre cómo verdaderamente opera la industria de la lucha libre, you know, más allá de, de, de lo bonito, de lo que vemos en un cuadrilátero, en un ring, vemos unos seres humanos en su casa, que de momento Randy Orton, por ejemplo, y su esposa, Randy a veces estaba 280 días, 300 días en la carretera. He was not at home for over 300 days sometimes. So tenemos la oportunidad de, de vivir eso. Así que adfreeshows.com y podcastheat.com para más información. Créanme, vale la pena la suscripción. No es porque yo la tenga, pero trust me, it, it is worth it. Es económico y tienes una gama de podcasts porque no solamente tienes ellos. Tienes a Rick Flair por el mismo precio. Tienes a Jake Roberts yeah. por el mismo precio. You know, An amazing lineup. Échale el ojo. Créanme, vale la pena. John, I have two more questions sure. left. How does it feel to be living your dream? Your two favorite wrestlers, Matt Hardy, Kurt Angle, a kid in a candy store at the same time. Like, you wanted to do this while growing up, and you're doing it with the people you wanted to do it. How does it feel? It's amazing, man. It's, it's, it's really special. And I'm so grateful to get to do what I want to do. But I also know that like you, you can only get so far if people believe in you, right? And people believe in what you're selling, what you're doing. And I'm so grateful that people will listen to my interviews or the shows that I do and, and find it entertaining or find something to take away from it whenever I get asked to like be on someone's show and if someone's like, man, I, I, I think you're like on the top tier of like interviewers or whatever, like, man, that is just the nicest kindest thing that anyone can say. And I'm so grateful and appreciative of that. And I love mentoring. I love teaching and I'm always down to talk to people because I was that person for a long time, always trying to shoot my shot. Hey, can I get this person? Can I get do this? man, I'm such a big proponent of creating your own opportunities. And I feel like if that wasn't my mentality growing up, I probably wouldn't have these opportunities because 
now I've got a gig that I pretty much created. And, and I'm grateful that Conrad and his team and everyone else involved have given me that opportunity. And, you know, you never know when it's going to end. You hope it doesn't end anytime soon. So you try to live in the moment. And I've got a lot of other plans to keep trying to take the world by storm and wreak some havoc, you know? Man, last but not least, the wrestling industry, it's kind of different of what it was while you were growing up. And it's more global, but at the same time, ratings are not everything like you have social media views you have the quantity of people buying your merch from india from puerto rico from mexico from uk from everywhere if you analyze the wrestling industry as it was before compared to what it is today what do you think the wrestling industry needs in order to attract an even you know an even bigger audience that they have today maybe bring some elements from the past or evolve the current elements like what do you think the wrestling industry needs in order to attract a bigger fan base superstars i think it's really as simple as that look why leagues like the nba have such a global outreach or why the nfl has such global outreach it's because you have two leagues in particular that know how to really market their superstars and Everyone in the world knows who LeBron James is, right? Because the NBA markets their superstars so well. So that's what pro wrestling needs. And that's why pro wrestling was so popular back in the late 90s, because you had superstars. And I don't necessarily put that on today's group of talent, because I do think there are people who can be superstars. I think that there's been so much damage done to how people consume pro wrestling. And in some instances, people are not allowed to become superstars. They're not allowed to become bigger than the brand. And when that's the case, you're not going to have that incentive for people to tune in. Like say what you want about John Cena and getting tired of his baby face booking and all that. But, It's undeniable. The guy was a larger than life star. So in order for pro wrestling to have like another really big boom period in terms of getting eyes on it, you need to find people that you're going to be able to position and, and on you. And I'm not saying you personally, but you as a company need to be willing to give them a chance to reach that superstardom because there are guys who, and girls who have that ability It's just a matter of, will you let them? So I hope it does. I hope it happens. There's less eyes on pro wrestling now than ever, yet somehow there's more money than there's ever been. So it's this weird dichotomy. And I hope that eventually that steam rolls into more eyes coming back. Hopefully. Well, John, it's been an absolute privilege to have you here in Lucha Libre Online with us. Wishing you success in all your projects, not only in wrestling, but in your life as well. And thank you very much for your time. Any last words you have for all the fans of Latin America that are listening to you right now? Gracias. Me apreciado su tiempo. And uh, I'm, I'm just so grateful for anyone who takes even a second of their day to check out any of my work or Conrad's work or anyone else on our network. It is so, so, so appreciated. And thank you for having me here. This has been a great conversation. I As an interviewer, I really appreciate someone who has done their research. I appreciate somebody who asks follow-up questions. So thank you, good sir, for uh, doing all of that. And, and I appreciate your time. Thank you as well. It's been our honor. Uh, never said this before, but uh, John Alva and Chris Van Vliet are my top two. So there, there you <laughs> oh, go. Thank uh, you. I just got off with interviewing Chris Van Vliet. So this transitive property going on right now, there's good synergy. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. It's been a blast. And let's wrap this up in Espanol. Este fue John Alba, The Ad Free Shows, The Podcast Hit y Del Mundo Entero, The Jersey para el Mundo. Y Michael Morales Torres para Lucha Libre Online, la marca número uno de pro wrestling y combat sports en el mundo. Nos despedimos.